Hey right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Half Fast 719. If you're ever going to do an oil change on these Audis, drain the oil, and then take the oil filter cap, take it off, and then you'll see about another, probably about another quart, eh, maybe a half quart, will dump out. <clears throat> Anyway, I want to get into a little uh, little rant, I guess you could say. Um, basically, um, from what I've read and what I've heard. Um, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe if you can, if you want to. It's cool to subscribe. All the cool kids in school are doing it. Oh wait, no one's in school. Anyway, so my little rant right here. Basically, so you got this coronavirus stimulus package that's going out to the states and cities, whatever, whatever. So, included in this coronavirus uh, stimulus package, on top of us all getting money, or most of you people, $1,200, woohoo, that'll get you by for about three weeks maybe uh, because uh, everything's gonna go up um, I have already seen you know toilet paper's gone up everything's gone up through the roof price gouging but anyway included in this uh, <laughs> set up a tripod sorry I'll get to it shortly um, but anyway included in this uh, stimulus package whatever it's called, whatever you want to call it, is an, emission, an Emissions Act clause, I guess you can call it. I'll be in front of you in a second. It's not like it matters. Nobody wants to see my mug anyway. Um, so, basically, you're going to have X millions of dollars for emissions. So emissions is going to come into play uh, a lot more strict emissions so California is probably gonna enact some even pre-smog and exempt emission stuff uh, because that's what they're blaming this on I was talking to a guy yesterday and he was saying that this virus and emissions mix and they collide and they stay together and they group so um, I'm assuming that whatever this virus is attaches itself to the particles and emissions and then when you're breathing that in it gets into the lungs um, vice versa because they're saying that um, I've heard a lot more people saying it's airborne more than it is transferred like you're gonna catch it more breathing and talking that's why they want the social social distancing six feet because they're saying that that air whatever pollution can travel um but anyway let me get into what i'm getting at so now epa is going to come in and they're going to step foot in so like my kids trucks a 93 dodge diesel uh cummins and uh they're going to come into play and they're going to want to start going after older trucks for emissions too now so that means even probably the stuff that's uh, exempt already, 1975 to an older out here in California. So anything 1975 and older, so 74, 73, 72, all the way, they're smog exempt. So, and anything pre OBD2 um, on the diesel side, I believe, don't quote me, um, because different vehicles are different. So I think the Fords, uh, 99 and newer have to be emissions and the dodges 98 and a half and newer are emissions and chevy i don't i don't even know i don't really care about chevy but anyway um i don't know what years they start the emission stuff out here but uh so like in colorado when i lived out there they did emissions on diesels in southern colorado from like I don't know, I guess Castle Rock South, or maybe it was just El Paso County. 
um, and certain counties, well, now they do it everywhere. But so what I'm getting at is instead of these little mom and pop shops to go do your emissions at in California, it's going to be state controlled. So that means they're going to be building buildings and you're going to take your car in probably no matter what year, you know, diesel, gasoline, and or hybrid even because that'll be fall into the gasoline. So they're going to make those vehicles go into these California governed buildings like in Colorado they got Colorado emission centers so they don't have like mom and pop emissions places anymore in Colorado they'll have uh, like emissions uh, like shops where they can adjust carburetors and they'll go in and they'll get it to to pass the emissions and then you take it to the emissions place and go get your emissions done but it's Calif or it's Colorado governed um, California is governed and controlled but now with this bill they're going to enforce it to where um, you know smog check or you know pass or don't pay these little shops they're basically going to put those guys out of business because you know when he talks and you pay 150 bucks 200 bucks to a guy under the table and he's still passing those emissions those cars that don't meet emissions he's still passing them because he's running them under his car or you know vice versa um the same with diesel trucks i don't do the diesel i don't do any of my cars if they don't pass i fix them um i don't believe in any of that i tried i'll admit i tried to do it with a a buddy's dodge diesel because i knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy and turned out he couldn't do anything so you know i just i don't even do it if it's if it won't pass emissions um i usually fix the problem and just be done this way i'm completely legal um like the dodges i i put all the stuff back on make sure that they'll pass emissions make sure all the readiness codes are passed um but what's going to happen is California is going to step in and they're going to start doing emissions on smog exempt cars. Um, Colorado, they already do. Basically, if you have, I think, a vehicle that's 10 or 12 years and older diesel um, in certain counties, you have to do emissions every year. Whereas California, right now, it's already, it's every other year. So they might enforce every year. Um, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this whole COVID um, stimulus package that they put out. Because it's not to help the people, it's to help the governments. The governments are going to enforce more rules, more fines, more laws, more stuff that's just going to hinder everybody else. So to that, I just wanted to add that. So I work for the railroad and we work with vehicles, with PTOs, um, on some trucks, some newer, some older trucks. So what the EPA is not testing, and they need to start testing, and if they watch the video, they need to start testing vehicles that have, you know, 100,000 plus miles or, you know, 5,000 hours on the motors and test those vehicles. And they'll come to find out that those particulate filters get plugged up and the trucks can't breathe, so they'll idle up really high, and they'll want to regen, and but they'll regen all the time. And when we're by those vehicles, when they're regening, you can't breathe. And we had the gang I'm going back to. Um, we have one specific. It's an F550, and that truck. When you're running the hydraulics off that truck, you cannot be by it. Uh, I went and drove that truck for. I don't know, 300 miles and I got the particulate filter down to about 35 percent cleaned and it still ran really bad I was getting 9.8 miles to the gallon um, it had no power and it was just it's just junk so basically that particulate filter was probably so plugged up that it kept it keeps wanting to regen and it keeps dumping that DEF in there because I probably went through about a gallon of DEF 
the whole time I worked for that gang, which was about about a month and a half, which I think is a lot because like the Audi here, the diesel, it'll go, I think it goes 10,000 miles for two and a half gallons. And uh, anyway, I don't know. It's just a little rant I wanted to talk about, discuss, because... I don't know. Diesel beware, I guess. Uh, they, they might start to not register diesels in California. That might be a thing. Because I know uh, they issued a thing. I was reading the, on the DMV, California.gov website. California DMV.gov, whatever it is, website. And in there, it was stating that any... 450, uh, I guess it's one and a quarter ton and higher. If it was like 10 or 15 years old, they're not going to register that vehicle in California. They will deny you registration for that vehicle in California. Um, this was about four years ago I was reading that. And uh, yeah, so I don't know what they're going to do. To me, it seems like they're going to be pushing for stricter emissions because of this whole coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19. Um, but what they need to realize is, is I, I don't really know what to say. I can only speculate. But you got more fuel. So when, you're, when your particulate filter is plugged, and you have to accelerate more, you're, you're pushing more fuel through the system, which is unburned fuel that's going out the tailpipe because that filter's getting plugged, and it gets plugged, 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 regens, runs like crap, runs like sluggish, and it gums up the oil. And I know I talked about this in a previous video, but it's just bad around for the whole environment. Now, we had a, one vehicle that didn't have the emission stuff, a, a high rail vehicle. That's what the trucks on the tracks are called, high rail vehicles. And we used a PTO. It didn't have emission stuff. Um, this was in, I can't remember if it was Wyoming or Nebraska. And you could stand by that truck. It didn't have the emissions, nothing, no regen, no DEF. And uh, that truck you could stand by and work all day without it burning your nose, without your eyes watering. Like my, my eyes were always itching at the end of the day. Take a shower, I'm hacking up black stuff and just nasty mucus um, from these trucks. So if anything, I think they're gonna try to basically push out the diesel for some stupid reason when they need to re evaluate the emission system that they're putting on these vehicles that are causing these problems. Um, they need to just get rid of it, gut the whole emissions, run the exhaust straight for a diesel, and um, basically just enforce uh, fueling laws and tuning laws. So, you know, I understand they can enforce tuning laws and make them burn clean and burn efficient. Um, and then if you're turning up the fuel and you're rolling coal, then yeah, implement those people and find those people. But the people that are just trying to spend, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a truck just to have it only last a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand miles, you know, I mean, come on, it's that's insane. Um, you know, and that's why I'm doing the oil change on my Audi about 5,000, maybe about 3,400 miles sooner than I should have. Um, just because I want the vehicle to last. I want to be able to do 300 and something thousand miles on my Audi. So if I can do 300 and something thousand miles or 400,000 miles on my TDI Audi, then I'll be good. But if not, then I don't get, I didn't get my money's worth out of it. And it's kind of pointless to owning and buying a vehicle. You might as well just buy a little beater and uh, let it burn oil. Let it deteriorate and just throw it in the scrapyard and let it go to waste. And then just waste vehicles that way. Um, otherwise, you can, if you keep them clean, keep them running good, um, you can keep vehicles for a long time. I like the Audi. 
Um, I like the way it feels, the heated seats, air conditioned seats. Will I buy another one later? Maybe, maybe not. I might keep this one for a long time. Um, some people might keep them forever. I don't know. So, anyway, that's going to be it for my little rant. I don't know what I'll title this, uh, but I got to get back to the oil change and I got to do laundry and stuff. So, thanks for watching, guys. You guys comment below what you guys think. Do what you guys do. Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.